Hello, everybody. Welcome to Drishti Center. We're doing a special class for beginners. I've been doing yoga for a while, but beginner yoga. There is a point where you want to experience more, more things, uh, maybe move to an all-level practice. And today we're going to explore a little bit of what happens into an all-level class, but more tuned to always the beginner variation. So make sure that you don't overdo things and you can always repeat this class to train yourself. And then you can try an all-level class and see what happens. And the worst that can happen is if it doesn't work, you go back to beginner. Easy. Let's put your hands up. Sukhasana, you can sit in cross-legged position, of course. If you feel that this is putting pressure on your knees, you can release one leg to the side. And if that doesn't help, and it helps your ankles or the knees, you can elevate the hips by putting that little cushion or a full blanket like a wedge, and you let yourself be more relaxed into your flexors. And find any variation. For Anna, for me, it works half lotus. It's your body. Please adapt as you wish. Take a deep inhale. Bring the shoulders up to the ears, nice and high. And on the exhalation, bring the shoulders back and down. One more time, take a deep inhale, bring the shoulders up, up, up. And on the exhale, bring them back and down. And the last time, inhale. And on the exhalation, bring the hands down. Now, when you move into all levels, we spend more time sitting. So I'm going to do a breathing exercise in cross-legged position. Bring your hands into the ground, lift up the chest. And on the next inhale, you're going to bring both arms up. On the exhalation, you're going to bring the right hand down, right in center. Don't jump yet. Inhale, elongate your spine all up. And on the exhale, walk your hands sideways. Anchor to the left hip as you stretch your arms sideways. And on the next inhale, let your arm take you up. Join with your hand back together. On the exhale, you do the left arm down, center. Don't go sideways yet. Inhale. And on the exhale, walk your hand, anchor the right hip onto the ground as you stretch. Inhale, go up again. On the exhalation, place now the right hand down. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, stretch sideways. Pick up a flow on your own pace. On the next inhale, one more time, you're going to go up. Join your arm up when you're ready. Exhale, left hand down. Inhale, nicely center. Exhale, stretching your side body, intercostal muscles, rib cage. Inhale, one more time. Go up. Bring your arm up. We're going to hold now on the exhale. Place your right hand on the floor. Now take a deep inhale one more time. Elongate all the spine. And on the exhale, move your hand sideways. Now place your hand onto the ground. You're going to do traction. So you need to understand how asymmetrical stretches work. At the same time that you push into your hand, your body leans over this hip. And at the same time, this top arm reaches in the opposite direction. And that's how you get a good stretch versus doing this. This is a good information for a beginner. So right here, anchor. Find your polarities, find the asymmetrical stretch and just breathe. Make sure that the shoulder is not climbing up. You have a beautiful neck and a strong neck so can look up to the ceiling if you wish. Good. Contract abdominal muscles. This should feel pleasant. On the next inhale, you're going to let your hand take you up. Bring both arms up. And on the exhale, we're going to let that left hand go down. We do the other holding. Inhale, center. And on the exhale, you're going to move your hand sideways. That's it. Plant your hand on the ground. And right here, anchor with traction. This hand lets you put a little bit of traction so all the body leans over to the right hip. And the arm above you. Go and reach us to the opposite direction so you create this beautiful opening. Careful with that shoulder. Put the shoulder down. Long, beautiful necks. And put your side, whatever feels comfortable, 
up in front of you or down. Keep breathing. Breathe in and all the side body, intercostal. Remember, there will be moments that I'm going to use a little bit of more visual cues to let you know where you're going to feel at. Don't get off of the pose and start poking yourself. Get up there and just hold. Contract tummy and on the next inhale, let's bring ourselves back up, lift up. Bring both hands together and on the exhalation, you're going to finish with your hands in namaste. Good. On the next inhale, you're going to bring your arms up again. Elongate the entire body. Interlace your hands. On the exhale, press your hands on this round part of the skull. Open those elbows sideways and try your very best to do a sitting extension. So you're going to look up where the wall and the ceiling meet. You're going to lift up to the sternum. Allow your back to be a little bit open. And for some people, this is uh, a very difficult thing to do, especially if your tendency is to lean forward. So right here, extend your spine, open your curves. Take another inhale. And on the exhale, we're going to finish the seating in sequence with your hands onto the ground. And if your knees are still OK, you're going to go forward, open your hips, and go down for another five breaths. Of course, if the cross-legged position was not a good pose for you, you switch into whatever works. But if you're moving to an intermediate or a no level practice, those are cues you need to have. What works for your seating sequences? Now, getting ready to come up. First of all, you're going to put your head up just a little bit. Enough that you can bring your hands underneath the shoulders, trying to lift up with arm strength. On the next inhale, we're going to go up, lift up, 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 up. And on the exhale, we're going to bring your hands closer to you and relax the shoulders. And yes, finally release one leg at the time. If you're not used to these, of course, there will be sensation on the ankles and the knees. Just shake it out a bit. Shake it out a bit. Good, good. And we need to learn to do malasana, squat pose. It's a pose that we use a lot in intermediate and all-level classes. And it's a controversial pose for sure, specifically for the knees. So why don't we start gentle and you keep sitting on your cushion. If you don't have it at home, get a thick blanket, a thick beach towel, fold it in many layers and sit on top of it. And from sitting pose, you're going to bring one foot in towards you and then the other very wide and the heels as close as you can towards your groins. Let the toes point to the sides and the heels come in. And you're going to bring your hands in prayer, letting the elbows open sideways. And voila, this could be a great variation for somebody that cannot go up, either for knees, ankles, or hips. And you can really work the inside of the legs with hands in prayer. Now, we're going to go into full squat, and it will be your decision at home to be responsible and careful with your body. If you want, you're going to lean forward. Good. And now remove the cushion sideways. Don't move it away because you might need it. And now lift up to heart and chest. One thing that can happen to you is... Maybe you're balancing in here because the length of the tendon and the Achilles is not long enough. There is another way to prop. With the same blanket or the same cushion, you're going to create yourself a high heel. And you're going to let the heels release into there. And that will ease uh, into your ankles. And then you can relax the base of the pelvis down towards the floor and the chest up. As up as you can bring it. Now, if you don't need it, you remove it. Each body is a story, so try to work accordingly to your body, not what I'm doing, but how you feel. And now come up a little bit taller. Good. Take another inhale right here. And on the exhalation, we're going to put your hands down into the floor. We're going to go to the other spectrum. This is a whole stretch in your spine. Your spine is going to open like the letter C of the alphabet. So you're going to let your hands go onto the ground. And the moment that you let the chin relax to your chest, the usual feeling in here, especially if you're tight, is a big stretch starting from the tailbone and going up to ACES, the last vertebra in your neck. 
and you're going to start feeling your upper back, your lungs on the back part a lot. And maybe you're going to feel the front part as well. This is a very, very deep stretch. And this is how we transition into Uttatasana or standing forward bend. So you take the last inhale in here, keep your head down, and on the exhalation, elevate seat bones to the ceiling all the way up, up, up. Ooh, that's going to feel good. Nice, cracking it into your legs maybe. And you're immediately going to adjust your feet hip width apart. And parallel. Good. Lift the ten toes off the mat and teach your feet to be flexible. Spread the toes open, space between your toes. Good. And here is a controversial pose as well. Uh, you can bend the knees if you have sciatic nerve pain. If your lower back feels inflamed or tight, if you have also herniated disc. If you have no conditions, you can go and straighten the legs, exploring the flexibility of your hamstrings. And this is something I want to teach into this class because if you go into uh, advanced or level class, they're going to say halfway up the entire class and people don't know sometimes what halfway up means. So stay where you are. I'm going to go sideways so you can have a different profile view where you are. Bring your hands onto your shins. First of all, we're going to start the gentle version of it. On the next inhale, we're going to lift the chest. Bring your heart up. And start creating a straight line from the tailbone up to the back of the neck. And if this is too much, you micro bend the knees to let the thigh or the quadricep femoralis major and glutes to neutralize your back. But if you're okay in your back, you might like it with the legs straight. This is borderline tapping into a little bit of intermediate or all level class. Take a deep inhale right here. Careful with your lower back on the exhalation. This is when people say fall forward and down. This is the meaning of bringing the forehead down towards the shins. Bend the elbows sideways, plug the shoulders, long necks. Why don't we do this again three times? Inhale, head up, chest up, lift up. Move away from the legs, all the top, torso, upper body. Exhale, fall down again. You can, if you feel okay, do a little bit of traction of the forehead to the shins, getting deeper. Inhale one last time. Take a deep breath. Halfway, lift up, rise. And on the exhalation, we finish. Bring the forehead down, down, down. This is a very important part of a sun salutation. Now bring your hands behind you. Interlace your hands. Yoga mudra. On the next inhale, bring the arms nice and straight. And on the exhalation, tuck shoulder blades in towards the spine, stretching chest, triceps, shoulders. You might decide if you want the hands apart or you want the hands together. Each shoulder, each wrist is the story. Whatever variation you chose, make sure that the shoulders are not putting pressure towards the ears because that can really collapse into clavicles and put them out of adjustment. What you want to do is bring the shoulders in and let the nickels reach up to the ceiling so the pose is active and not jamming into your vertebrae. Good. Take a deep inhale, bend your knees, press on your feet. And on the exhalation, we're going to roll ourselves up one vertebrae at the time, all the way up. Keep the arms up and away from your body. Good. Oh, that's going to feel good, especially if you're a little bit sore from previous classes. <laughs> you're going to take a deep inhale. You're going to lift up, move the hands away from your glutes. Look up where the wall and the ceiling meet. And on the exhale, <sighs> This is ideal to do if you have a little bit of resistance into your upper back and it constantly goes forward. This little bit by little bit helps you open it into your chest. Bring your feet together, arms by your sides. We're going to take a deep inhale, bring the right arm to the ceiling. Now the heel of your palm on the exhale is going to go into the crease where the hip bone indents. And on the exhale, you're going to go sideways. And with the heel of your palm, you're going to move 
into your pelvis to the right as your hand moves to the left. The same principle we did in sitting, repeating again, and standing. Remember in the beginning, we, we did our side stretch. It's the same thing. Good. Now, make sure again that your neck is not completely lost. The neck follows the line of the spine. Move the hips. Feel the support on the right heel as you move the hips. And on the next inhale, go back up. And on the exhale, bring your hand down. Release both arms down. Inhale, left hand up. Heel of your palm into your hip. And same thing, arms straight on the exhale. Pressing gently on that indent when the hip enters. When the head of the femur enters the receptacles right here, move it sideways so you can get a deeper sensation down below. And of course, you're feeling right here, right here. Wonderful pose to prepare for triangles, side angles, anything that requires your arm up and extension sideways. Keep breathing, strong core. Here, giving you a nice cue. When you're doing this, you don't want to go too far back. That puts pressure on your lower back, and you don't want to go forward because you're not extending. So it's about finding midline and then go sideways. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, bring your hands down to the floor. Bring both arms down to the ground. Good. And another big pose you need to learn. Bring the toes touching, ankles touching. Ukatasana. I think the less like pose in yoga for everybody. I actually love it because this could help your lower back a lot in transitioning back and forward. I want to teach you this so you don't hurt your back ever. When we do Ashtanga, this is one way to do sound salutation B. We bring the arms by your sides, feet together, bend your knees, and the action of chair pose is actually going in with your hip flexors and sending the seat bones back and not going forward. And this is where a lot of people that don't understand the pose hurt the knees. So on the same time that the inhale goes, I'm going to do it in slow motion. You go seat bones back, open, open, and then you sit down. And that way there's no pressure on your knees. And you really cue glutes and you really cue your quads. Come up here. Good. We're going to warm up deeper. On the next inhale, bring your arms behind you. Squeeze your triceps. On the exhale, bring your arms in front of you. Eye level, not past. Inhale. One more time. Go back. Squeeze triceps. Exhale. Arms in front of you. And last time, inhale. And on the exhale, you're going to keep the arms here. If you went up here and you became this shape, it's too much. Bring your hands immediately into the chest. If you're here, and you have no problem, the next level is putting your arms beside the ears, but that's going to become a back bend. Be careful with that. Sit down. Whew. So now you know what beginners is beginners, and active beginners is different. Now press on your feet, and on the next inhale, you're going to stay here. See how it's no impact on your back on the exhale. Bring your hands down and extend your legs. So this could be a great variation for people with lower back problems. Go in and out of Uttatasana with chair. Let's do it on the way up, OK? Arms by your sides, nice and loose. Bend your knees. And on the next inhale, the same thing. Hip flexors in, chest goes up. Good. And on the exhale, press on your feet and rise up. <sighs> What you did is stabilize the lower back using quads and using glutes, which could be a nice technique for lower back problems. Balancing. Mm. I am going to remove this thick mat. I don't like to do balance in thick surfaces. Working with my thin mat or on the ground. And right here, find yourself into mountain pose first. You could keep with apart, arms by your sides, chin tuck in slightly. And take a deep breath. Breathe into the back of your throat. This is called Ujjayi breath. Open your eyes and now find a uh, still point, something not moving. We are going to go with a not so easy balancing pose, but I think it's worth it for you to try it. It's called Eagle Pose, and we're going to teach it beginner. 
And of course, we're going to go one level up and you'll decide what to do. First of all, I did chair because it connects to eagle. If you get the principle of chair, you're going to get the principle of an eagle pose. You're going to sit back again a little bit, micro bend the knees, and if this is open, that will be easier to go down. Put the weight into the right foot, and now bring the left leg crossed. And we're going to start gentle here, trying to arrange one quad on top of the other and put the toes on the ground. And right here, before you even mess up with the arms, let's not go with the arms yet. Let's talk about the pelvis right here. Bring your hands right into the indent where the groin is and make sure that you lean back a bit and sit. Good, so there is a softness in there and you're feeling your glutes again. And now bring the arms in front of you. So if this leg is crossed, the opposite arm is going to go underneath, so you're going to go with right arm under and hook your arms into eagle. This is already hard work. You may stay here. You may want to play with the foot of the ground and see what happened. Sitting down deeper. And you may want to bring the foot back to hook behind your calf to make it more advanced. Remember, I already gave you the beginner one. And if you are okay, you can sit down, but don't lose the length on the chest. Feel the stretch on your shoulders. Okay, let's take a deep inhale. We're gonna unwind, release, open your arms, bring the legs sideways, and on the exhale, down. <sighs> Move along a bit, shake it. Let's find the other leg, spread the toes, feet hip width apart, hands on the indents of your pelvis. Take a deep inhale, and on the exhale, we're gonna go again into this very soft, soft pelvis work. Don't bend too much yet, and now just cross your leg. Trying to work one leg on top of the other, toes on the ground, bring your hands on pelvis and make sure you're soft as you let the seat bones open back, the same sensation that Ukatasana, there's a softness on your groins. That's healthy hips and yoga, that's gonna save your pelvis. Now, when you're ready, bring your arms in front of you and do the other arm, left arm underneath and bring your hands in front of you. Asymmetrical stretch. The way that you tie the arms helps you to balance to the way you're crossing your legs. Sit down deeper in chair, like you were in chair just a moment ago, and you can release the foot off the ground, and you can bind it if you're s feeling space on your leg. Do as you wish, keep the shoulders open, keep the chest open, sit down deeper if you wish. Breathe. And just slowly take a deep inhale, unwind the arms, open the leg, and on the exhale, just back to center. Woohoo, shake the legs. So welcome to Active Beginner. Probably I don't teach this much in beginner normal, but today is different. You can return back to your mat or spread your mat again. We're gonna go to triangle pose. I think it's a worth it pose to explore. And I forgot to get a block. I'm going to get a block quickly. I'll be right back. Stay on the screen. Don't go anywhere. What if I don't have a block at home? Very easy. Just get a thick book. There's books or this kind of length, even if it's not this thick. But a thick book, a box. Or you can order them online. They're all over the place. Try not to get plastic, though. Now, you're going to put it right there, and what we're going to do is stand into the front of your mat, good, bring your hands into prayer, take a deep inhale, we're going to work ping pong style, and you're going to bring the right knee up, and on the exhale, you're going to bring the leg behind you, you're going to turn your feet parallel now, and you're going to open your arms, and you're going to make sure that your feet is right underneath the wrist, and what we're going to do is grab the block if you need it to the other side. 
Turn the right, sorry, the left heel out 90, back heel in 45, so your feet is aligned. Look down for a moment. This is cue that is important to align the legs, one heel right behind the other heel, and the back foot turns in either 30 or 45, all depending how much mobility you have on your hip. Now, when you're ready, extend your arms, take a deep inhale, softness on your pelvis, go a little bit back, that softness into your hip again, and on the exhale, come forward like you're reaching for something in front of you, go a little bit farther, and when you have enough, you may want to land into your block, the arm is up, If you don't want to work with a block, just remove it, put it into your leg. If you don't want to work in the leg, you work up higher. And if you are flexible and you want to try what it is, you can put your hands or your hand on the ground, on the inside of your foot, and the arm lifting up towards the ceiling. If you feel these too invasive into the hamstring, contract your quadriceps to make you balance those two group of muscles. They work together very well. So when you put quad, you shelter the hamstring a bit. But if you stay the feeling okay, you go and hold. So yes, we're holding. That's part of getting a little bit more intermediate. On the next inhale, you're going to go up, 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 up. Ping pong style. Don't think about it. On the exhale, just turn your feet to the other way. Very easy. This is a way easier transition than creating a whole flow. So you're working at home. You can follow this. Inhale. The same thing. Let the pelvis be soft. Good. And go forward in this deep exploration. If you want your block, you will put your block on the inside of the leg. If you don't need it, Go and explore if the hand could be on the ground or higher up to the leg. The arm above you is up towards the ceiling. And try not to move the shoulder back this way. That can create, with time, a little bit of hypermobility in the ligaments on your shoulder. So always make sure that the shoulder in socket. And lifting. Feel your pelvic floor right now. Do a little contraction of the perineum and pull your quadriceps at the same time so the triangle doesn't get invasive into your body. Breathe. Hold. Pick up the neck. Don't let it die. Looking up, in front of you or down. I know there is so much instruction. That's why sometimes you might even want to look at the class, take notes, and then do it again, especially if you really want to learn. Now contract belly, and on the next inhale, we're going to go up, up, up. And on the exhalation, we're going to bring your hands on your waist, and we're going to finish this mini standing sequence with prasarita, or leg apart, forward bend. So you're going to go look down to your feet, make sure they're parallel. And then another change coming that's really good to strengthen into your ankles. Bring the toes in towards each other a bit, and put your block in front of you. You might need it. Now, when the toes come in, you extend your legs, and you feel all the muscle on the side of your leg, all the muscle into your ankle coming to life. Now, hands back, take a deep inhale, open spine, and on the exhale, we're gonna dive forward, 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 and down. And the block is there for people that are a little bit tight on hamstrings to support yourself with a block right here. If you can easily touch the ground, then just go into the floor. Place your hands underneath the shoulders, come up, inhale, halfway, lift. And on the exhalation, we're going to go down, down, walking the hands back and letting the top of your head go down towards the floor. Good. One more time, you're feeling your hamstrings, and if this is too invasive on your hamstrings, Balance it with a little bit of quadricep work. We're almost done with standing. I understand that if you're not used to it, you might start to feel your legs a little bit shaky. 
bring your hands underneath the shoulders. We're going to do a twist. We're going to choose our twist right here. Come up halfway. And on the exhalation, remember halfway, you came up, 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 up from seat bone to the crown. On the exhale, tighten up your core. You might need your block in the center. Hand in the middle, fingertips to the left, arm is fully straight. Here, what not to do is bending the elbow and try to twist from that way. Bring the arms straight, 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 so you can keep the halfway. And when you're ready, left arm as you inhale rises up to the ceiling. On the exhale, bring your hand onto your waist to begin and do a twist to the torso first. Look up to the ceiling if you may. And here, you might be able to bring the arm up to the ceiling. Maybe, maybe not. Breathe. Okay. Take another inhale. And on the exhalation, we're going to bring your hand down towards the floor. Fingertips go to the other side. On the next inhale, one more time, find the length. Lift up, rise up, bring your hand into your waist. And on the exhale, just twist first the torso. If I let you bring the arm up right away, you're going to do all the work from your rotator and your chest. So you have to learn to twist the body first. And then when the body's twisted, just bring your arm up and the arm will not be torn. This is how people torn uh, their ligaments in yoga, too much work. What it has to move is the torso. Pick up the neck, look up. Ah, <sighs> Breathe. Take another inhale. Do twist a little bit on the exhale, maximize a little bit more. Let's do same time, right and left. Now we're coming down, breathe in. And on the exhale, let's go down slowly. Rest yourself there for three breaths, hanging like a pendulum, nice and relaxed. Seat bones up, legs are strong. Now how are you gonna get out of here? Well, we're gonna figure it out, both hands underneath the shoulders. On the next inhale, you come halfway. Remember what I teach you about halfway is the entire torso comes up, lift up. Now on the exhale, one hand at the time, bend your knees if your butt hurts, stay straight if you can. Bring your hands back behind you. One breath, inhale, takes you up, 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 lift. And on the exhale, center your body, hands into prayer. Turn your foot forward, facing to the front. Bend your knee and slowly step to the front to close your standing. Okay, shake out the legs, relax the legs for a moment. Now, go back to the center of your mat, right in the middle, transitions. How to transition back to the ground? Of course, it'll be easy, just, but we're trying to learn yoga. We're trying to connect one asana with the other. So let's do it gracefully, feet together, Chair pose again, and of course, it's going to give you a little bit more work. Bend your knees, and on the next inhale, let's bring your arms up, 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 right here. And on the exhalation, you're going to bring the knees a little bit more bent and plant your hands on the floor right in front of you, 45-degree angle from your shoulder to your hand. And then lean a little bit forward to your hand so you can release right leg first and then left into downward facing dog. Okay, it's the first downer dog on the class. So you look forward to your hands, middle finger and index point forward, thumbs point towards each other. Activating your hands, baby finger into the lines of your mat, doing traction and stretching and breathing. If your heels don't touch the ground, not to worry. Seat bones to the ceiling, knees bends if you need to. Traction back again, stretching. Child's pose, on the next inhale, put your knees down to the floor. The first child's pose, that's how you know it's not beginner normal. Exhale, go down slowly into child's pose. Balasana. Take three breaths in here, rest in your legs, rest in your back. And even when it's not a very exotic, different class, 
If you feel tired right now, it's because you're working hard. A lot of the poses are not easy. So don't feel abnormal at home if you're a little bit shaky or sweaty. <sighs> Bring your hands underneath the shoulders. This is another controversial transition, how you get up. If you have pain on your knees, knee replacement, sit to your side, avoid the next one. If you're fine, you're gonna roll up. Roll up slowly, slowly, from bottom to top. All the way, all the way, hands into your lap, all the way up. Shoulders up and down. If this is bugging your knees, block, thick block right here. So you learn to do this. If you don't have that, you can use your full blanket or two blankets. And right here, just land for a moment. We're almost done. There's so many classes in the website with the sequences on your back that today I didn't want to do so much on your back and beginner. Today I want to show you other things. So put a mark if you don't want to do standing and do this one. <laughs> Let's move sideways. Bring your legs to the side and come forward. Of course, we're going to do ab work. We're going to do Navasana before we roll into our backs. Navasana is a bow pose and it's really good for core. And the difference when you come to Pilates that when you do to yoga is when you do Pilates, this is scoop back, right? And this is one way to do it, that if you have back problems, probably stay here. In yoga, we work with a straight spine in Navasana, so holding the back of the knees. On the next inhale, let's bring ourselves nice and tall, nicely lifted. And now on the tip of your toes, just do little, little walks in towards your body and bring the legs one first and then the other up to 90. Good, drop the shoulders down, lift up the heart and chest. Breathe. Hold. And this is it. This could be a very great beginner variation. Now, a lot of people, the knees open. Mine are open because I'm tight in my hips. Try to bring the knees together and you're gonna work a whole different level there, pelvic floor. And now release and try not to hunch and bring one hand facing each other. I'm shaking, this is not easy, so don't feel foreign if you are shaking too. Balancing. Take another inhale right here. And on the exhale, bring your hands behind you, put your feet down into the floor. Allow the knees to open, that's it. <sighs> Grab to the ankles, take a deep inhale. And on the exhalation, we're gonna come forward, forward, and down. Remember, these classes are not edited. They're kind of live, so what happens here is what's gonna go into your screen. So sometimes we have a mistake or we confuse a word. Please bear with us, be patient. Have two more breaths here to relax your back. This is your pre-shavasana, you're cool enough. Take a deep inhale. And on the exhalation, we're gonna roll up from bottom to top, go slowly. Go up, go up, that's it. Lift up, shoulders go up, shoulders go down, beautiful. Now bring the knees together when you're ready. Next inhale. Extend your arms in front of you. Make sure you have enough mat. Otherwise, you come a little bit forward. This is called sinking boat. The same idea of deep core work. Another focus transition. Go one vertebra at the time from your lower back. Breathe in to the mid back. All the way down. Right here, it becomes a little bit strong. Go down slowly. Slowly. And when you're done... Hug your knees into your chest. Rock side to side. Oh yeah. We have a few minutes for Shavasana, so we're gonna lie down. 
arrange your serve into corpus pose. If the lower back hurts, you can put a bolster right underneath the knees and you relax down to the floor all the way down. Please stay down. I'm going to guide your Shavasana from cross-legged position. But you stay on your back and enjoy. Letting the legs be heavy, arms by your sides, chin tucked in a little bit. Work the shoulder blades in towards each other so the chest is open. Let the rhythm of your breath from being probably during the class sometimes agitated to now become soft. Notice if your face is holding up into your jaw and your lips. Relax your forehead, your eyebrows. Invite your face to do yoga as well and soften up in this Shavasana to facial muscles. Feel space between upper teeth and bottom teeth. Relax your tongue. I notice sometimes in these times so for certainty, I wake up in the middle of the night with my jaw absolutely locked. It's normal, it's human to have these moments happening to us. And yoga is just here to remind you that being soft is okay. So when you catch those moments of tension, remember the words of relax your jaw, relax your lips, relax your mind. Bring attention now into your hands and feet, parts of your body that sometimes they are tensing and you don't notice conversations, on your rest, when you're reading, sometimes you're closing your feet too tight. It's okay to give in, put your hands up to the ceiling and receive. Relax in your feet. You're trying to go to bed and if there is anxiety again, Sometimes they have a mind on their own, a different agenda than your mind, and they keep moving. So right now, allow your legs to relax, your feet, your thighs. And if that happens to you before going to bed, remember these words, remember in your nervous system. that You can visualize a breath coming to your legs, letting the legs be heavy, Letting the legs be relaxed and your feet relax. And more than anything, open a direct channel between your mind, your emotions, your physical body. So it could be dialogue between the three of them, helping you deal with whatever is going through your body. And right now, it's time to relax. I'll let you be in silence for a couple of minutes.
coming back slowly, moving your hands and your feet, hugging the knees into your chest when you're ready. There's no rush anything, no need to rush anything. Take your time. And finish your class with a hug on the knees, letting your back expand for a moment. Please roll to the right side in a fetal position and get comfortable there for another three breaths. Mm. Ground, touch the ground with your hand as you are into fetal position. Get back to feeling your body. And when you're ready, push through the side carefully to Sukhasana sitting pose. I'm already here waiting for you. There's always a before and an after and how you failed. And we don't need to judge if this better or not better if you excel your expectations or you didn't. What I will recommend right now is to focus on your energy body and feel what vibration you have. If the vibration is high and you feel energized, this level was right for you. If you feel drain, sweaty, tired, perhaps go back to the first few classes and try this in a month and two weeks. Bring your hands in Namaste, Anjali Mudra, hand gesture, universal hand gesture of gratitude. And you're gonna thank yourself for your effort, for the moments that were hard, for the moments that were pleasant. If you learned something new today, for whatever experience was the last hour, Thank you so much. I am Anna Paula Hernandez, or Anna, Director of Drishti Center. See you next time. Namaste. Have a lovely one. Thank you.